In the heart of the Amazon, the day began as it always had. The river, a vast placid artery, was a perfect mirror of the calm grey sky. It flowed with a languid, almost imperceptible grace, its surface disturbed only by the occasional dip of a kingfisher's wing. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and the drone of unseen insects, a timeless rhythm of life that had played out for millennia. Along the muddy shore, people went about their morning rituals, their movements as familiar and steady as the river's current. Their lives were woven into the fabric of this place, a deep ancestral connection to the water and the forest that sustained them. But on this day, that ancient rhythm was about to be broken. It started subtly, a strange rolling motion on the water's surface that defied the gentle current. It wasn't a ripple from the wind or the wake of a passing canoe. This was something different, something rising from below. The water did not ripple, it swelled. A great silent dome of water pushed upward, displacing the river as if a hidden hill were emerging from the depths. One by one, people on the shore stopped their work. A hushed whisper spread, fingers pointing towards the impossible sight. Their eyes widened, first in confusion, then in dawning disbelief as the water heaved. It was as if a sleeping mountain, long dormant at the river's bottom, was stirring in its slumber. Then, the surface broke. They saw the glint of wet scales, each one the size of a man's palm, catching the flat grey light. A vast living tapestry of olive green, marked with bold black circles, rose from the water. A long, impossibly thick body broke the surface, wider than a dugout canoe, and it just kept coming. A collective gasp, sharp and sudden, rippled through the crowd. On their faces, a primal mix of fear and profound, undeniable awe. This was a creature of myth, the Yakumama, the mother of the water, made real before their very eyes. This was not just any snake. It was larger than any even the oldest elders had ever seen, larger than any told of in the stories passed down through generations. It had emerged from the heart of an emerald labyrinth, a world of rainforest and river that serves as the cradle to countless hidden lives. Here, the green anaconda reigns as a master of camouflage and silence, an apex predator perfected by evolution. What might look like a drifting log to an untrained eye moves with a deliberate serpentine grace, a silent hunter patrolling its domain. The head alone was immense, a wedge of reptilian power. Its eyes, cold and ancient, took in the light, their vertical pupils assessing the world outside the water with an intelligence that felt both alien and profound. In the dappled light of the Amazon, where reality often blurs with myth, the creature lay coiled. At first glance, it was just another part of the muddy riverbank. But as the eye traced its form, the sheer scale became difficult for the mind to process. Each scale, a perfect iridescent tile, formed a mosaic of immense proportions. It was a living paradox, an entity of breathtaking beauty in its geometric perfection, yet terrifying in its implied power, a silent testament to the raw, untamed force of nature, resting but never truly still. When it finally came to rest, its full, unbelievable size became even more apparent. It wasn't just a snake, it was a feature of the landscape. Not just long, it was thick as a column of muscle that displaced the earth beneath it, a solid, living wall of flesh and bone. One elder, his face a map of his years by the river, said it looked like a wall of the river itself had risen from the depths to breathe the air. The story, carried by whispers and digital signals, sped from village to village, then rippled out to the wider world. A team of herpetologists, driven by a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, traveled for days, by plane, by road, and finally, by river, pushing deeper into the Amazon's embrace. They found it just as the villagers described, resting peacefully, calmly digesting a recent substantial meal. Its lethargy was their window of opportunity. Their approach was one of deep professionalism, Yet beneath the surface, you could see the flicker of childlike wonder in their eyes. This was the stuff of legends. They coaxed, never forced. Every movement was a careful negotiation, a show of respect. 
Slow hands and steady breaths were the only language that mattered here. The first measurement, length. The tape stretched on and on, unspooling past known records, past scientific expectations, into the realm of myth. The final number was staggering, just over 10 meters, the height of a two-story home, the length of a city bus. A hushed awe fell over the team. Its girth was as thick as a mature tree, but length was only half the story. The true test of its dominance in this ecosystem was its mass. The weight would be the next and most difficult trial. A specially designed sling was carefully worked beneath the immense body. Load distributed. A slow, steady lift began. Everyone held their breath, silent. The digits on the industrial scale climbed quickly, blurring past 100 kilograms, then 200. Then they slowed and held. 270 kilograms, nearly 600 pounds of solid muscle, bone, and life. The weight of three men combined. Every scale, every fold of skin, the water clinging to its body, and the unseen weight of its recent prey. It all added to the astonishing total. Here, on the banks of a remote Amazonian river, science had just quantified a legend. It was, in every sense of the word, truly remarkable. In the heart of the Amazon, the day began as it always had, shrouded in the quiet mist of the river's edge. For the villagers who lived by its rhythm, the water was a source of life, a provider, its currents as familiar as their own breath. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and the distant calls of unseen birds. Mateo, a fisherman whose hands knew the story of every knot in his net, began to haul in his morning catch. But this time, something was profoundly different. He felt an unyielding, impossible weight. A dead, sullen resistance that wasn't a log or a tangle of river debris. It was a weight that seemed to pull back with a life of its own. Then, the river itself seemed to hold its breath. The water pulled back from the shore, receding as if in deference to what lay beneath. From the murky depths, a form began to surface. Two unblinking eyes stared from a head fit for legend. A primeval gaze that seemed to hold the memory of the river itself. Primal fear shattered the morning's peace. He ran, his voice cracking as he shouted, The river is alive! A monster in the net! The great snake moved, a slow, deliberate adjustment of its colossal weight, and the shore itself shook with its latent power. But soon, raw fear gave way to a sense of profound duty. A research team, summoned by an urgent call, arrived with a different purpose. To document, to understand, and to protect. The community, guardians of this ancient place, made space. They were no longer facing a monster, but bearing witness to a wonder. We thought we knew the river's spirits, the legends whispered from one generation to the next. In that moment, we understood we were profoundly wrong. The strong cords of the fishing net, designed to hold hundreds of pounds, snapped like weak thread under the creature's immense girth. The elders watched with a quiet, knowing respect. They were both custodians of the river's myths, and now, witnesses to its living truth. This was not only a biological discovery of staggering importance, it was a moment that held up a mirror, a measure of who we are when faced with the truly sublime. The team understood the stakes. Every movement had to be slow, deliberate, and respectful. Loud noises were forbidden, as any sudden action could provoke a catastrophic response from the powerful animal. Two of the most experienced handlers pressed inside the massive coils, their movements gentle, precise, and filled with an intense focus. It was a tense, silent dance between man and serpent, a negotiation conducted entirely through touch and intuition. The tape measure was unfurled, five meters, then seven, then nine. The number kept climbing, finally settling at an almost unbelievable 10.2 meters. A number so far beyond the known limits it had to be checked and rechecked. This was an extraordinary outlier, a giant from another time, and its existence had to be carefully verified. Next, the weighing. A custom sling was gently worked beneath its body to spread the immense weight evenly. 
Scientific ethics and the animal's welfare guided every single step. Is this the largest anaconda ever found? Evidence was clear. Photos, witnesses, expert measurements. Heaviest snake, green anaconda. Longest, reticulated python. 10 plus meters and 270 kilos challenge boundaries. Tales of 15, even 20 meters lack proof. This case was different. Measured live, then released. Snakes grow throughout life, slower after maturity. Size needs the perfect mix, genetics, prey, safety, and longevity. A tiny blood sample and a temporary satellite tag. Tracking its range will reveal behavior we rarely see. Myths inflate. This reality is awe enough. Anacondas are non-venomous boas. Power lies in coils. They tighten on each exhale, stopping breath and blood flow swiftly. Flexible ligaments let jaws stretch over wide prey. Capybaras, deer, even caimans are on the menu. Built for water, watchful above, hidden below. They give birth to live young, often dozens. Most won't survive, but those that do can grow for decades. An apex of this size signals a healthy, balanced ecosystem. It means prey is plentiful and rivers still run clean, but deforestation and mercury-tainted waters unravel that web. Toxins climb the chain, ending in the predator's body. Attacks are rare. Education replaces fear with stewardship. Protection needs policy, cooperation, and empowered guardians. Sustainable economies keep forests standing. Together, they ensured the giant returned unharmed. It slipped into the water, powerful and calm. A final flick, and the river kept its secret again. Life moved on, but the story became a legacy. Encounters like this teach humility. There are still places where ancient rules apply. The anaconda commands respect, not domination. Coexistence is a choice we make, together. Our brief intersection with its life gives us responsibility. Remember the day the water moved and choose to protect. The Amazon's giants still live. Let's keep it that way.